So before I get into the techniques I used in this project, let's have a look at the overview of the project and each of the component parts. So first of all, I've used a guide, and this is this STL here. I used the mesh workbench to section out the part that I needed. I'm interested in this part here. I'm just going to come into the model, come into the view tab, and just set the selectable as false. Therefore, I won't get any flashing when I roll over this. So if I have a look, what I've done is I've created a number of freehand B splines using the Curves Workbench. And this follows the fender creating a wireframe of this shape. And if I hide the model, click on press the spacebar, you can see the shape that I have here. Each one of these is a freehand B spline that follow the contours of the inner and the outer part of the fender. We also have these curves that control the curvature of the surface or the wireframe. This takes a little bit of time, a bit of patience to get this right, but we always use the SDL as a guide to our modeling. This could be a picture, a drawing, or some other type of reference material to guide you on your way. With the curves, we can create something called a golden surface. This follows the curvature of those curves and creates a surface using those curves. Any edits done to the freehand B-spline by double clicking on them will affect the curves and the surface of the fender. Once the golden surface has been created, an offset can be produced, thickening the golden surface to allow for additional modeling. I took the offset and added a fillet to clean up the edges. The surface still needs some work and that can be easily done by changing the curvature of those freehand B splines afterwards. Once I'm happy with the surface, I can add some additional decoration, such as a simple light, which can be applied to the surface with simple fusions. A mirror is then created between those two and a blend is created to connect the mirrors together. This is all done in the Curse Workbench, which is an add-on workbench to FreeCAD. What we'll do now is have a look at some of the tools that we used in FreeCAD to create this surface and how they work in the Curse Workbench. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So what is the golden surface and how do we use it? For starts, we need the Curse Workbench installed and we can add that from the tools and the add-on manager and we can do a search and find it in there. The golden surface creates a surface that skins the network of curves. So we need some curves. Now this can be done by using any of the tools up here. One of the common ones is the freehand B-spline. We could use a sketch, but we need a minimum of four curves. So I'm gonna use the freehand B-spline. If we roll over it, we can see the options we have there, of inserting lines, deleting lines, etc. You'll notice that the delete isn't on there. That's the delete on the keyboard for a point. So we we'll create our first curve. It gets added to the screen. And we've got the section lines and the control points. Now I have got a video of how to use the freehand B spline, so it's worth looking at that. If we click on the section line and hit I on the keyboard, we add a point in there. And the same on this side. So we have our first curve. We control the curve in the different viewpoints. And we have full control over this curve 
using the points and the section lines to place it into place. So let's say this is my curve that I want. Let's add some angle. I'm just going to double click the freehand B spline to accept that. So in edit mode, we double click it, the points appear. We can manipulate the points in 3D space. Double click the B spline and we set that. I'm going to create another curve. This time using the freehand B spline again, making sure nothing's selected this time and add it to the screen. And we'll just manipulate that into position. And we'll place this with some curvature about here and double click again. Now the minimum as said was four curves. They have to be touching at the points. So I'm now going to select this vertex and control select the other vertex and again add the freehand B spline. This connects up to those points and I'm going to select the B spline and hit I to insert a point and add some curvature. So you can see these points here are locked into position. You can unlock them by selecting them and selecting S to unsnap or snap and then we'll be able to move that point. Going to do the same on this side as well. Click one side, one vertex and then the other. Add the freehand B spline. Click on the spline and hit I to insert a point and we'll manipulate that point in 3D space. So this is a basic network of curves. The more curves we add, as we saw in the vendor, the more control over the surface we can create. To apply this surface to these curves, select one, control select the other, and we work our way around selecting all the curves that we want. And then using the golden surface or surfaces golden surface. What will happen is that a surface will be added conforming to the curves. Now we've added the four curves, we can add some more if we wanted to further control the surface. To do that, I'm going to come over to the golden surface and open it up in the tree view. We can see all the freehand B splines within. I click on the golden surface and press the spacebar. So let's say we wanted to increase the curvature of this surface around about in the middle. To do that, I'm going to select round about where I want the curve to sit by clicking on one line and then control selecting the other line. Where I've selected will be placed the freehand B spline and connected to those curves. We can move these along this curve because it's not on the vertex. Again, I'm just going to select the freehand B spline and hit I to add a point. So now I've added a point, I'm going to bring this around this way and create some curvature. I'm going to take the point and pull it up to the top. The movement of the curve will be planar to the view. So as you can see, we've now got that curve and I've moved it along this view. So no matter where I move it at the moment, it will always be planar to that view. So if I pull this around to this side, it's going to move planar to this view. So now we've got our curvature in there. If I double click the freehand B spline, that's applied that curvature to the B spline. We've still got to apply it to the golden surface. Click on the golden surface and press the space bar. If we come down to the data tab and look at the properties, you'll find the sources. You see a number of curves in the sources. Just click in there, click on the button on the end, and then select the freehand B spline. Now when we hit OK, it will be applied and added to that list. See we have a tick, means it needs recompute, click off, and our curvature has been added. Now we've got full control of this curvature. We can double click the freehand B spline and move this spline and double click again to apply. So for instance, 
it's easier to hide the golden surface by pressing the spacebar. And then, then selecting the spline, double click it to edit, and we can move this into position. And then double click it again. Bring back the golden surface, and you can see it's controlling that curve. One thing to remember is when we're controlling the curvature of the surface, is that if we have, and I'll take one of these B splines for instance, if we have some curvature that comes right out here, then we can control the curvature with these spanning curves. What might happen if the curvature is pulled all the way around? So let's take the other side. I'm going to double click to put this in edit mode and pull this all the way around to say here and double click. Can't make it happen at the moment, but what normally happens is that we get the surface escaping the boundaries. And if that happens, let's see if we can make it happen. Let's click on this one, we'll click that, and pull this all the way down out of the way. Put this up here, and bring this around. And hit escape. You notice that we've got this boundary here that's starting to escape. The spline we added, this one here, you can see the spline that we've added, and it's starting to fold. If that happens, then we start adding some curvature going across the surface itself, like this one here. Let's just hide that. Let's make a spline across here, control select one side, control select the other, create the spline, click on the spline, hit I on the keyboard, we'll add some curvature, and double click to accept, and we'll bring back the golden surface. You can see where it's starting to escape here. The minute we start adding the freehand B spline to the golden surface in the sources and click off. Our curvature is controlled, stopping it escaping from the borders. Once we're happy with the curvature of our surface, so for instance, let's do something like, like this. We then can make this thicker and solid, because at the moment it's just a surface, by coming over to the part, selecting the golden surface, and using the offset. So created the offset there. And we can use the fill offset to fill that offset within. And hit OK. The offset results depend on the curvature of the surface. So if you're finding that you don't like, say, something like this, this is due to the curvature of this surface, and we can further control that. Let's hide that offset. Again, by coming over to the Curse Workbench and adding extra freehand B splines to control that surface. get a better offset. This takes some practice and patience to do because what we're creating is a wireframe of the shape that we want. So for instance, I can create another curve going across here to further control the shape. Remember it's a network of curves. And we've added additional curvature in there and we just add it to the golden surface.
given a small control of the Gordon surface. with the additional splines. As you can see, we've deformed the surface with that additional spline going through the middle, creating a wireframe of that shape. Once you've finished with your surface, you may see that it's a bit rough and of a lower quality. This is just because if we come over to the view, we've got this deviation here. And we can lower the deviation to 0.1 and we get a much better result. It's worth keeping the deviation as it is until you finish the modeling and then you can up the deviation to get a better result. So I hope that's given you an introduction to the Gordon surface and the freehand B-splines to allow you to create that 3D wireframe, create more complex surfaces. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.